Hello everyone and welcome to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have some great guests joining me at this time who I'm excited to have on the podcast. Please welcome from Norway, Car Dang. Whoa, right. thank you. It's very nice to have you guys on the podcast. Actually, my first guest uh, from the country of Norway to be on Super Cool Radio. Oh, All right. Nice. Nice. Cool. It was very nice to meet you guys. I know we have a lot to discuss uh, with uh, Cardang, but I kind of wanted to start at the uh, the beginning. So how did Cardang come together as a band? Uh, it, it all started out in uh, the end of the ep epidemic in 2021. Uh, <clears throat> me on the vocalist, Chris uh, Williams. Um, my old pal, uh, Boogie silver uh, we we did several of bands uh, not together so uh, in 2021 he got he got a cool riff from the we ain't dead yet song and he uh, said maybe can we do something together and then we it all the, the ball started rolling like uh, then first we we made uh, we ain't dead yet then was magic, and then came uh, Junkies in the, the picture, and uh, we got a band and rehearsal, and we made a couple of LPs. That's how we started. All right, on very nice, very nice. So, uh, Junkus, so how how did you um, join the band? Uh, I was in another band uh, when Cardang star started, and uh, you know, I me and Han me and Boogie always you know chatted on on Facebook and such. Because me and him, uh, we, we never played in the same band, but we, of course we knew each other. And and me and Chris as well, me and, and Chris had the same day job for approximately 15, 20 years. And, uh, you know, we, we knew about each other's bands, but we never joined the same band. And uh, and Boogie, you know, told me about Kardang and he, he sent me the two first, two first demos and I was quite impressed. And I couldn't believe that it was Chris's singing because I knew Chris, but he was more of a metal guy. But this was rock and roll. I, di I didn't believe he could sing rock and roll. <laughs> and um, I believe Boogie, you know, he was the only guitarist at the time. And I believe he wanted another guitarist to join join in so he could you, you can we can split the, the guitar duties, so to say, and, and maybe share the lead guitar job. Have a partner in crime on the guitar uh, stuff, but I, you know all the bands I've been in before. I played bass guitar, so uh, he wasn't in lack of a bass guitarist. So, but I, I told Henning, yeah, but I, you know, I can play guitar as well, <laughs> because I was impressed with the with the Cardang singles. I just wanted to join the band, and uh, I told him, you know, it's you know bass guitar, it's four strings, and, and lead guitar is, is six strings. It's just two more. How hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I joined the band and start, you know, joined a couple of rehearsals and uh, it, was, it was a fun crew. We've been a five piece ever since. That has been fun. <laughs> oh, for sure. What I, I really like about uh, you guys' so sound and style is that, you know, sounds like good old American, like rock and roll, uh, which I, I very much enjoy. Uh, but like it's just so cool. So like I'm curious for you guys. So like kind of developing the sound of Cardang. Like uh, who are your influences? We, uh, <clears throat> actually, we have a lot of influences. We have a lot of because we all come from different backgrounds. But I think mainly the the how shall I put it the the main thing about Cardang is about the sound is because in the studio. We have um, this engineer guy called Thomas and Galatin. <clears throat> he, he, we told him what kind of sound we wanted and he 
found what he meant for us. And together we have developed uh, this special Kodan sound. It's, um, I believe it's a, it's, a, it's a mix of everything, you know. Our influences are, you know, obviously ACDC, KISS, classic metal stuff like Judas Priest, of course, Iron Maiden, all those you know all those classical bands of course american band cinderella of course poison all those hair metal bands what the crew ramones you know we could go on and on here and of course maybe a lot more poppy music like brian adams of course rod stewart you can easily hear chris's voice uh, <laughs> you can hear everything in there and uh, and chris you also like you're more of a you know all you also like grunge yes i'm i'm, I'm into soundgarden and stuff like that so that's that's a, that's a thing with Kardang. you know my favorite band of course is acdc but uh, if if all the members of Kardang had acdc as a favorite band you know we, we we cannot it's not cool if you sound too much like this band or that band so it's 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 cool that everybody is coming with their influences a drummer for instance is a huge pantera fan but we don't exactly sound like pantera but you have every you know how you have some bits and pieces in there uh henning you know Bo boogie he's more into deep purple a rainbow uh, thin Lizzy, uh that, that kind of you know 70s i'm into much of the same status quo uh slade of course t-rex yeah so it's we have some of we have some of uh some bands in common but we also have you know our own favorites uh and every you know the whole mix here is uh huge melting pot of influences oh for sure like I, what i really about really like about your guys' sound is that you know it does have like some of those influences there but you have your own kind of unique sound and style to cardang which is where which is what i really like and i'm kind of curious so like for you guys how is it writing and like what's the writing and recording process for car day it can be different it's uh usually start with a riff an important thing we all have in common in the band is we we are you know suckers for our melodies you you have you, you you can have a cool riff you can have a cool beat and whatever but you you you, you need to have some hooks some huge choruses and the melodies and uh that's what we all have in common and if you have a great melody even if it's the verse or on, at, the, at the chorus that's you know it whatever if you have the great melodies you have a cool riff then of course some cool lyrics with some cool cool hooks the way that happens can be you know i can come with a riff to to, to chris here and and tell him listen i got this riff here maybe a word or two or maybe i got nothing and and he comes up with uh, you know some great stuff and uh, maybe i can come up with some great stuff myself on the lyric or the vocal part and also you chris now and then you come with uh, with uh, you know vocal core vocal uh, some lines or uh, a chorus or whatever and i come up with some chords and and you know it just turns into a song which we both like <laughs> but mainly we we are three people writing the songs and we we take we, we take them all to rehearsal and and we try to jam them along with the other two guys and uh, and see where that goes because you can do very much on your laptop or or you know back home programming drums and uh, do things in your your home studio but it it really comes alive when you when you can test it out in a rehearsal area and and, and jam it along with uh, with the, the whole band that's you know usually how we write songs we 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 play we record a demo a quick demo you know with really basic drums basic everything just as you have the the, the riffs the melodies and the choruses and then we take it to rehearsal uh, our rehearsal area and jam jam through the song and yeah 95 percent of the time it it really develops and and you know kicks along and then we record this and then we go back to my home studio and we try to record it the way it sounded at rehearsal and then we have a pre-production which we take to the studio and we try to record it that way for us that's a real good way to make the songs uh even if even if me or or chris or whoever wrote or had the ideas for the riffs and the melodies and such in some way the whole band has joined making the song what it is for sure uh but also uh how about your perspective as well similar like his it's uh, we don't have a, a a timeline in in the song it comes with a feeling well when we rehearsal we we sometimes just tear the whole song apart and take it from the start 
and uh, other other songs when we just make it it's first take so we don't have a, a plan when we make it we just have cool riffs or stuff like that and try to fix it from there and uh, usually all the five members come up with their thing if we, we re rehearsal it maybe like five six seven times then it we started to feel the groove and when you feel the groove then it's now we are getting somewhere it's like that with every song i like that i like that so like um for you guys do, I, do you perform them live first before recording them or do you like to record them and then perform them live we oh, record we first yeah. first we rehearsal <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's an important yeah. step. And then we record, and then we play live. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Kind of focus on the live performance side. So, do you guys approach writing and recording differently than like performing live at a show? It's many of the same things because you always need a plan, and we, we try to come to the studio as prepared as possible, not just uh, to avoid uh, the hours, you know, the, the rates and the hours ticking, and but but you know, we we like to have a plan. We like to involve this, our technic, our studio technician, and 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 show him the songs before we start recording them. So he also knows how we are thinking to to you know to where we, where we want to get at. So we we invite him to the Dropbox folder, and and he also listens through the songs before we start uh, recording them. And uh, of course, he comes with uh, some some tips and ideas, and also actually joins to develop the song you know but live we try to be as uh, rehearsed as possible and and have the same you know if we rehearse a set list before the show we stick to the set list we don't fuck around and 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 change songs and so on we don't have the word by word or you know choreography and you know we, we don't you know we have the songs and uh chris here he you know he does what he does between the songs and now and then he just disappears and uh, the rest of the band just need to keep the live show going until he comes back. The main uh, key elements of the show, uh, you know, we, we have agreed upon before we start, of course. So it's, if you compare the live situation with the studio situation, it's kind of the same same deal. Yeah, yeah I feel, I feel um, when we're in the studio and when we're playing live, it's music is our main priority. But the show, for me, is like... Um, I'm totally another guy when I'm on stage. I have this adrenaline kick. So, like he says, um, I'm not always uh, uh, the one to trust or count on. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I'm, suddenly I'm in a, in a different room or <laughs> talking to uh, the bartender and sings to his wife or something like that. So, <laughs> but but music is the main thing, and then it's yeah. the show. When people come come to see us live they pay for a show you know it's we try to give them a not not only the music but a performance and you know kiss always said that you know they when kiss started yeah they wanted to be the band that they always dreamed of seeing and uh you know we, we're all fans of you know older classical bands like kiss and, and, and acdc and all those you know that are putting up a real show and newer bands as well not 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 you know the darkness they are not new anymore but they are the same thing you know and and also this uh you know the, the southern river band from australia the same thing it's rock and roll and they have you know they have something else something more just not the music only you know they have they have the show and they have the you know the attitude live to to give the the, the, the people uh, the audience an experience and uh, something else, no, something more to the when they are paying to see us. They they have a show, not just uh, ju not just the music. You want to hear a fun fact, Matthew? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year, 2023, there was this uh, contest. They had about junkies, a hundred Norwegian bands. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, One and thing, uh, yeah. we we played for 2021, 2022, 23. We had about 10, 20, 20, 25 shows and festivals around Norway. And we became the fifth best live performance band. So that's, wow. that's some kind of cool thing. Yeah, yeah, we're proud of that. We are proud <laughs> of that. You know, Norway is not the biggest country, but you know, we have 
quite a few bands. So coming becoming a you know fifth place, that's you know, yeah. The, that is a, a thing. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a really great tre- achievement for that. So look, I'm I'm curious. So like um. Like the music in Norway, the bands in Norway, are they like like rock and roll? Are they like metal? Like what, what's kind of like the the music genres in Norway? It's kind oh, of it's the, not- an old uh, redneck sound now. <laughs> really? Yeah, where where they sing in Norwegian, and they go like all this here, pussy and uh, cock and uh, titties and butts and asses and <laughs> that's what a lot of people like now. So yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of, kind of, uh, you know, modern, you know, maybe country and western, just with the techno beats and so on. It, it's kind of rednecks, you know, rednecks in the '90s, kind of, you know, that musical style. But when it comes to music, you know, real music, as we call it, it's more metal in Norway, black metal. And uh, you have Dimmu Borgir and and you know those bands. They are actually the biggest cultural export we we have in Norway. So if compared to Sweden, or you know, Norway is not very big in in rock and roll. I don't know if you ever heard of a band called Turbo Negro, but that's 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 the biggest band I guess we have in rock and roll. And of course, they came, became quite popular with the, the Jackass uh, series and Bam Margera and, and those guys. So, yeah, that's how um, that's how I heard of them is through uh, yeah. is through that TV show. Yeah, 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 they are fantastic. But you know, that's pretty much how far it goes when it comes to you know big rock and roll bands in Norway. Sweden, much bigger country when it comes to well-known bands and also metal bands and rock and roll bands, yes. Well, there, but there are two great bands from Norway now. You have this uh, Vig, Vigvam, Vigvam, and you have uh, TNT. Oh, I've heard of TNT. I didn't know they're from Norway, though. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, they're from Norway. Yeah, they're, they're cool. I've, list, I've listened to some of their music. I'm curious for you guys, uh, before we close this interview, so I'm curious for you guys, focus on the live performance side, do you guys have a favorite original song to perform live? If we have one song, favorite song. Yes, do you guys Do you guys each have a favorite song um, from Cardang yes. to perform live? Uh, I have uh, When the Water Runs Dry. I love that song, playing live. Make the audience jump. That's my uh, that's my uh, erotic dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have so I have so many, but uh, I don't know. I can say uh, "Man Eater." That's a fun song. A fun song to fun song to play. Very nice. Uh, two great songs from you guys. Uh, my favorite from you guys is "Roll Baby Roll." That is my favorite so far uh, from Cardang. Yeah, really. Did did you see our new video, by the way? I did, I did, but that's where I was going next with it. Um, so, like, how was it filming that music video? Because it looked like a, a really great time. It was a great time, apart from you know, ne- we never we never uh, traveled to the states. You know, the guy that lost lost her, his lady to the other guy. He we, he's a familiar of us. He's he's a Norwegian who married a girl in uh, in Las Vegas, actually. So he's been living there for uh, some years, and he. He knew some some guys. He knew the the he knew Charles Henry who who did all the filming and uh, directing. I believe he is also a member of the Blue Man Group, Charles Henry. Uh, and also they got uh, they got hold of uh, this this actually married couple uh, who is you know two of the actors, and uh, the guy who stole this uh, stole his woman. He is actually C J Linda. He is actually the son of uh, Till Lindemann from uh, from Rammstein. You know, I saw an interview with him, and he 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 said that he 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 just got to know a couple of years back. His mom ma- his mom told him that yeah, your father is Till Lindemann. So uh, that's quite cool, and uh, and the lady is uh, now his wife, Sonia M- Mallory, isn't that her name, uh, Chris? Yeah, I think it's about it. Yeah, yeah. Sonia. And they both have uh, quite a lot of uh, followers on Instagram, both of them. So it was very fun to to uh, to have them on the team, and uh, you know all the live footage in the video we we did back home at the barn of uh, dr- you know the drummer's barn, and we. We made it look like we uh, we uh, you know we were in uh, Nevada as well, but we we weren't. We were back in Norway, <laughs> but it, it mixed perfectly perfectly into the video. So yeah, <laughs> we can we can brag about that. We were uh, in uh, America. Yeah, we did the shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, very nice. I think it turned out really well. I really liked the the whole, you know, the the visuals in the music video and um, you know, kind of the story with everything. I think it turned out very well. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I leave if anyone, anyone wants to check it out. I'll leave a link for the for the video in the description of this podcast. But now as we're closing the interview out, uh, so what are the plans for carding for the rest of 2024 and into early 2025? Yeah. 24, we have three gigs left left and that's you know just local we have two gigs in bergen which is uh, one of the you know main cities not too far from us and uh we have some plans in 25 chris we have uh we're going abroad for the first time actually in the uk yeah for first of first of june at the call of the wild festival yeah in lincolnshire yeah i don't know how many of the bands you've heard michael monroe you know original singer of uh hanoi rocks he's one of the headliners so uh, we really hope we can meet him <laughs> so um or maybe he will hope he will meet us <laughs> <laughs> we could dream <laughs> no but but actually in uh, in uh, January, we are going to the studio and, and make some new re make some new songs. So yes. next year, you next year you there will come more songs. So that's some kind of we are all in, we are now in the writing process. So maybe four, five, six songs, junkies. Yeah, we have yeah. enough material. It's just uh, we we need the time to just put it all together. But we have many ideas, and uh, let's see how far it goes. And uh, yeah, when we have recorded enough songs, whenever uh, we will of course put a, put out another album. But uh, you know, it's it's not like uh, the eighties or nineties anymore to put out a, ho a whole album and and have three singles and then you you sell a lot of uh, you know a lot of copies. It doesn't work like that anymore. So, you know, the wisest thing would just be to have singles. And uh, when you have released yeah, 10, 11 singles, then you put out the album at the end. So that's a, you know, maybe a w weird way of doing it, but it's, you know, what works right now. And uh, I believe that what's, that is what everybody is doing. So, um, we just want to play a lot of, of you know, a lot of gigs and uh, just to spread the name and spread our music. And a lot of people are buying the vinyl. We don't have CDs, we just have vinyl and we have uh, streaming. Well, it's very cool. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing uh, some more new music from Carding uh, in early 2025. So I'm very excited uh, for you guys. And I hope, uh, I hope the writing and recording process goes very smoothly for you guys as well. Thank you. Thank you. But now for everyone watching and listening, where are the best places to find Cardang online? Of course, we are on Facebook. Uh, we are on Instagram. And uh, of course, if you have Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, you, I believe we are on all streaming services online. Uh, but, but on you, YouTube, you can uh, also see, uh, I think we have about eight, ten videos. So yeah. if you want to see us act and you know, check out youtube very good i'll leave some links for carding in the description of this podcast please check out and support them but thank you guys so much for uh stopping by super cool radio thank you thank you for having hope us to, hope to see you next year hey that hey i i hope so too because that would be awesome cool yeah <laughs> <it would. laughs> Cardang, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this episode of Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs>